Okay, really quickly before we get started, I will have some tips at the end of this video on just how to adjust for sizing and things like that. So stay tuned to the end or go to the end to check out the tips. <laughs> okay guys, so today I'm gonna show you how to make these sneak and peek booties or crochet socks and you'll need a few materials to get started. So I used a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook as well as a bulky five yarn. So I used the mandala watercolor yarn to create these socks. And I've also created a pair using the Chroma Twist Bulky from We Crochet. I have all that stuff linked down in the description box below. You'll also want to get some stitch markers that come in handy as well as a yarn needle. So these socks are pretty easy to create overall. You do need to be comfortable doing a half double crochet stitch as well as a magic circle. If you can handle those things working in a round, you'll be able to follow along easily with this tutorial. So go ahead and start by just making yourself a magic circle and placing that on your crochet hook. And you can just follow along here on the screen. Okay, so as you see here what I'm doing, just like this, okay? You wanna kinda of hold it to make sure you secure your magic circle that it, so, that it, so that it does not fall apart. And then I'm going to make a chain of three. That's gonna help secure, the first chain is to kinda of keep the circle from coming apart and then the additional two is for the first half double crochet stitch. So we're gonna work round run and basically what we're doing is we're gonna do half double crochet stitches into the magic circle. So we'll do a total of 11 because remember the chain of two counts as your first half double crochet stitch. So just follow along here, making sure you do a half double crochet stitch into the magic circle. And if you're not comfortable doing a half double crochet stitch, please check the tutorial on my channel. I do go slower in showing you how to create that stitch. Okay, and just keep working until you get 11 half double crochet stitches completed. Once you have at least a total of 12, meaning that chain of three plus 11, once you have 12 completed, you're going to slip stitch to join your round. And basically what that means is you're going to insert your crochet hook into that chain of three from the initial. Okay. And then I did a little yarn over and pull back through both of the loops. And that's just gonna join your round. You'll need to get comfortable doing that. Okay, chain two, into that very same space as your chain two, you're going to put a half double crochet. Now this is our round two and this is considered an increase round. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two half double crochet stitches in each stitch around. So just follow along here. Now, I don't know how easy it is for you to see it on your end, but if you kind of give it a little tug, you can see the hole a little bit easier, the stitch that you'll be working through. You're going to do two half double crochet stitches in the same space, the same stitch. Okay. What we're creating here is kind of like the toe area of our booty or our sock. Um, so that's what we're doing. So you're going to do two half double crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. Okay, if you want to pause and continue working, we can meet back here once you get your round completed. All right, now this is what it should be looking like at this point. You'll end up with 24 half double crochet stitches. All right, once you have a total of 24, you're gonna slip stitch to join that round. So right there in that chain of three that we completed at the very beginning of the round, you'll insert your crochet hook. I try to do it towards like the top part and slip stitch to join. Okay, we are chaining two. Don't worry about the hole, we'll fix all that at the end. Okay, so now we're at round three. This is yet another increase round. We're gonna increase from 24 to 32. So let's follow along here. Your chain of two here is gonna count as your first half double crochet stitch 
In the next stitch, you're gonna do another half double crochet. So right now we have two half double crochets. In the next stitch, as we see right here, you're gonna do two in the same space. So that means you're doing two half double crochet stitches in the same space. Okay, just like that. Then in the next stitch over, we're gonna do one half double crochet. And then the next stitch over, one half double crochet. Okay, and then we're gonna do two half double crochets in the same stitch. So essentially your pattern is going to be one half double crochet, one half double crochet into the same stitch. You'll do two half double crochets. One half double crochet, one half double crochet, and then two half double crochet. And that's gonna increase your round from, like I said, a 24 to 32 stitches. So if you get to, um, thrown off in any way, when you get all the way around, it's not that many stitches, just give it a count to make sure you have 32. And you wanna make sure you're doing this because you're going to, on your other sock, you have to have the same count, otherwise your sock is gonna fit awkwardly. <laughs> One's gonna fit one way and the other one won't fit the same. So be sure that you kinda give it a count here so that you're, you know, you're clear. And this is our last increase round, okay? So go ahead and continue working. This is kind of what it should be looking like. And again, it's not nothing wrong with just pulling it apart at this point and start counting your stitches, making sure that they are, you know, you're on the right path. The pattern is being worked correct correctly and then just keep moving. And I hope you can see that. Now, again, if you can't see the stitch work, um, that's normal. You just want to kind of pull it apart. Like when I say pull it apart, just kind of pull your work a little bit and you can see stitch work your stitch is a lot easier, okay? So at this point, if you wanna go ahead and pause and continue working until you get to 32 stitches all the way around and then we'll start to our next round, okay? Once you get your complete round completed, you're going to slip stitch to join, okay? Chain two, and now you're gonna just do a half double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. So we finished our increasing, so we only had to increase for this project twice. We went from the initial, um, the initial um, round of 12, then we went to 24, and then we went to 32, and then for round four, round five, we're going to just continue doing one half double crochet stitch in every stitch around. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Just keep working all the way around. And if you wanna pause at this point and then come back, um, I'll catch you back up with where we are. Okay, so if you want to um, just keep working, we're gonna do round five, four and five, and then I'll come back on and show you how to work round six, which is a pattern change. So you just keep working it around. After you get past um, round four, as you're headed into round five, your item, your sock will start cupping a little bit and that's exactly what you want. So just keep working until you get to round six and then I'll meet you back, okay? Okay, so also remember that my chain of two will count as my first half of half double crochet in each round. So keep that in mind as you're working. The very first, um, the, the chain of two is your first half double crochet, okay? Now that once you completed round four and round five, we're going to move into round six. Now round six is actually a pattern change. So let's discuss what that is. You're going to do six half double crochet stitches in, in six stitches. So you're not you're not gonna put them all in the same stitch. You're gonna do one half double crochet stitch, then to the next stitch, a half a double crochet stitch, and keep going until you've done six of those, okay? Once you've got six half double crochet stitches, including that chain of two, you're going to do a chain of four, just like I'm doing here on the screen. Then you're going to skip four spaces four stitches. So skip over those. One, two, three, four. In that fifth stitch, you're going to do a half double crochet. Do you see what I'm showing you there? This is what we're making at the kind of the toe portion of our sock. 
that's the pattern for that area. That's giving it that peekaboo, that sneak a peek type of vibe. <laughs> Okay, once you've done that, you're going to continue doing half double crochet stitches in every stitch around until you get back to the beginning. So essentially what you're gonna end up having is 28 half double crochet stitches, but then you have to keep in mind you have that chain of four where you skip the four stitches. So all around, you're still keeping that same 32 stitch count, but really you're only made 28 stitches because remember we did a chain of four and we skipped over that section. See there? So just continue working until you get all the way back around. Okay, perfect. Now at this point, if you wanna give it a count, just to make sure you have the right number of stitches, I would suggest you do that because you don't want your sock to be, you know, especially since you have to make two of the exact same, you don't want them to be off, you know what I mean? Okay, so let's start round seven. You're gonna start with your chain of two, which is your first half double crochet. And then we're gonna do, again, following what we did for round six, we're gonna do six half double crochets. Remember, the chain of two already counts as your first one. So now you have two. You're gonna to go to you get to six, okay? And when you get to the, um, the sneak and peek area of the sock, you'll stop and do your chain of four. Okay, so let's count it. You have six. Perfect. Then at that point, you're going to do a chain of four. So basically what we're doing is we're just creating a ladder look effect to that front area. Once you have four, then you're going to skip over that same space, same four stitches like we did before. Into the fifth stitch, you're going to do a half double crochet stitch and then do half double crochet stitches in every stitch around. Okay, so this is the pattern. You'll follow this pattern for a little bit until we get the desired effect. Okay, again, you just want to just find the next available stitch and then insert your crochet hook and do half double crochet stitches. Okay, so you just keep working. I'm gonna stay on camera a little bit. I'll probably insert a little bit of music or something just so you can keep working and then watch what I'm doing if you need a little bit more. But again, if um, you know this part, you're down with it, you can um, fast forward and I'll try to put a timestamp to where you get to the actual, um, we get to the heel, heel area of the sock. So just keep working. Okay, so just keep on working. If you need to pause the video, come on back once you get this area completed and we'll move on to the hill. All right, now once you have that completed, it should look something like this. And now we're ready to move on to the next pattern or the next change. So we're at round 13 at this point and you're gonna just do a half double crochet stitch all the way around. And I'm going to stay on screen with you really quickly because remember we have that space where there is nothing, you know, the chain of four space. I'll show you how I work around that space. Okay, so at this point, I am still just making half double crochet stitches in each stitch until we get to that space that I was speaking about earlier. Um, I guess we can call it like a ladder because it kind of looks like a ladder, but it's, um, I'm calling it the peak, no, the sneak and peak, the sneak and peak sock. So... Um, when we get to that sneak and peek area, I'll show you how to work that. So go ahead and put six half double crochet stitches until we get to that space. 
when you get to the space of four, you're going to just half double crochet stitch right into that space. So basically what we're doing is we're treating those four, that chain of four, like they're four stitches. So you're going to do four half double crochet stitches right into that space. Okay, see what I'm doing there? All right, and then once you get completed with that, then you're just going to go into that next stitch and just continue working all the way around doing half double crochet stitches. So that's why I say this is pretty, it could be a beginner friendly project if you're comfortable doing the half double crochet stitch and working kind of in a round because the pattern really is kind of right here at the beginning. So you see that's what we're creating right here. We're going to continue doing a half double crochet stitch in every stitch around until you get to round 16. Okay. Okay. So now we're at the flat portion of the sock. Let's just slow the video for a second and talk. Basically we've been working in a round. Now we're going to be working in rows again. So basically we're going back and forth and we're going to do this in 16 in a 16 stitch space. So where am I, where I left off with my last um, half double crochet stitch, I'm going to count over 16 spaces. That's essentially half of the distance around the sock. That is where we're going to actually put our flap or the heel area of our sock or our slipper. Okay. So you want to put a stitch marker right where your crochet hook is, count over 16 stitches, place another stitch marker. This is where we're going to create rows. Okay. So you're going to do a chain of two, just like we've been doing. And then we're going to do half double crochet stitches across 16 stitches. We're going to chain two, turn our work and go back and forth. Okay. So again, we're no longer working in a round at this point. We're really just working back and forth. And I hope you can see that on the screen, what I'm trying to illustrate. So basically I flattened my flattened out my sock and I put a stitch marker right where my crochet hook would be counted over sti 16 stitches and put another stitch marker that essentially would make my sock, my booty in half. If that makes sense. So you're going to work, um, let's work these in rows and you're going to do your heel flap so that it covers the back portion of your foot. So I did a total of five rows. Now here's the thing. If your foot is larger, longer, so I have, I did this for a size eight and a half all the way up to like a nine and a half foot. So really this would fit like a size seven to about a nine. If your foot is larger than a nine and or maybe you just want a little bit more room you're going to add another row to this heel area and so if you want say for instance a size 10 instead of you doing five rows you're going to do eight rows if that makes sense so head over to my website if you have any questions about how I did I try to list it out there but basically you're just making a small flap and keep in mind when you put this on your foot the yarn is going to have stretch to it. This is a this is not a cotton yarn. It's an acrylic yarn, so it has some give to it, and that's why you don't have to make your heel flap area very large. Okay, so once you have the flap area completed, you're going to go ahead and finish it off, and you're going to fold it in half, just the way you see it here, and then you're going to sew along the raw edge of the of the heel. So I'm doing a lot of talking. I hope that it's clear on the screen what I'm trying to illustrate but basically you're just going to fold that flap in half visualize that you're making like a little shoe and you're going to sew along the back edge now I do sew down and then I sew back up because that's the area that I don't want to come loose while I'm walking you know so you see how it looks there that right here is really like a footy if you wanted to stop and just kind of go you know put a finishing round you would have a little footy I'm bringing mine up a little bit further on my ankle makes it more of a booty style okay so what I'm doing here is we're gonna go ahead and create the ankle I'm gonna attach my yarn back to my project and then I'm just going to do a round I want to say I did a round of half double crochet stitches you can do a round of single crochet stitches you can you know that's fine I want to say that I did a half a row of half double crochet stitches only because that's what my mind was working when I created the project. But around a single crochet stitches would work too, guys, okay? 
you basically what you're trying to do is create a uniformed ankle area so that you can continue to work your project and it doesn't um, so you have a nice even stitch count so um, let's see the easiest thing to do what I did was I just worked around and then whatever number I got I wrote that down so that way my other sock would be the same you know what I mean so in my case I did 32 stitches around you may have a little bit more or a little bit less whatever number you get you want to just try to keep that consistent with your other sock if that makes sense okay um, and you're gonna see how I did it here I want to make sure that I'm creating a snugger area because of course your ankle is usually smaller than your um, your leg so because this is going to come up around my ankle I wanted to make sure that it was it was nice and secure okay so in my case I did a total of six rounds for my ankle so kind of the same way we worked the sock I worked around I got to the end I slip stitched to join and then I continued working around and I kept my stitch markers in place just to give me an idea that I've gotten back around you don't have to leave a stitch marker in here guys it just was easier for me to just see where I was working you see there and I'm just going to slip stitch to join what did I slip stitch hold on what am I doing let me see okay I just did a half double crochet stitch I don't like that I think I'm gonna fix that actually yeah I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it I didn't like that big of a space there so I'm gonna put another half double crochet right there and then I'm gonna slip stitch to join okay so just continue working around like I did a round of six if you want yours to come up a little bit further on your leg just continue to doing your rounds I didn't want it to be too bulky you know what I mean so that's how mine turned out the green pair that you saw in the very beginning that one was created in a size for um, 10 11 so it was a little bit too big for my foot but if you have a larger foot if your foot's a little bit wider then you may want to go with an extra couple of um, rows in the heel area okay now what you see me doing here is I'm just sewing up all the loose ends the beginning remember the toe area I told you not to worry about you're gonna want to sew across that area to kind of secure your toe you don't want your toe peeking out of the sock and then any loose ends that you have you want to make sure that those are all tucked in I turned my sock um, inside out so that the part that I sewed was on the inside of the sock I mean and that's pretty much it <laughs> This is a women's size 8, 9. Again, you can, like I said, customize it. If you want it to be a little bit smaller, you may have to, you know, change up the rounds a little bit or just make your heel area a little bit um, shorter and you can get a shorter sock. So that is what we're looking at. Again, this is the green pair using the um, Chroma Twist yarn from We Crochet. So this is a really easy, fun project. This is a size 10, 11, so a little bit bigger, but it um, worked up really nicely. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, leave them in my comment section down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. All right, guys, so here are a few tips. The type of yarn that you choose for this project will matter. Whether you go with a bulk five or a um, weight of four yarn or even something different, you'll have to keep that in mind when you're creating your actual sock. So I've done both. I used the bulk five and I also used a four weight yarn and um, there are there are different measurements. So if you check out the pattern over my website or you purchase the pattern, you'll see that I tried to indicate that in the pattern, but just keep that in mind. You wanna kind of get Good, good measurements so that way your sock will still fit if you choose to go with a lighter weight yarn as opposed to the bulky five weight yarn okay another really quick thing is if you choose um if you choose to go with the mandala watercolor or the ombre yarn you will get different colored socks so keep that in mind if you want a solid color go with a solid color yarn okay so another tip is this, once you work around and you're about to get to your heel area, you may not come, you may not end your round at an even point. So at the end, you're basically going to, once you have created the um, bridge and foot area of your sock, you have to create the heel. If you find that you're not evenly spaced, you'll want to finish off the work 
and be finished there, reattach the yarn so that way it's evenly spaced along the back part of the heel. Okay, so if you look at the screen here, you'll see where I have the two stitch markers. That is an even count of 16 at the back part of the footy or the sock, okay? I, had, I didn't finish off there, as you can tell where my yarn is actually sitting. So what I'm gonna do is just finish off the work, just like I'm finished with the project, and then reattach it at that orange stitch marker. That way I will, it will allow me to work an even 16 stitches along the back portion of the footy, okay? You can kind of see what I'm talking about right here as I've created the heel already. So that's what you want, an even area for the heel. Okay, so the next tip is this heel area is where you're actually going to grow your sock or your booty. So if your foot is longer, you'll just do more rows in this heel area. If your foot is smaller, you'll do less rows in this heel area. Well, actually, if your foot is smaller, you may actually have to do some decreasing in that front part too. So just look at the pattern for more tips on decreasing it. But definitely if you're going to increase it, you would increase it right here in this heel area. Okay. All right, guys, I think I've given about all the tips I can think of. I'm sure there are many more. If you made it this far, you are a real one. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Check out the pattern for more written instructions, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.